Okay, satu, dua, tiga Action What is up guys? Fahan here with Za once again And today we are with Hasrin How are you Hasrin? I'm good, I'm good Thank you so much yeah. for coming down to review your bike The Hasvana Spud Villain 200 Thanks to Sharul, I actually got the name right <laughs> <laughs> I actually pronounced the name Spud Villain I, I have read about this bike before Before mm-hmm. I even met Sharul and mm-hmm. the KTM uh, showroom tour and I was like, Hoss, 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 Hoss. Pronounce the name, sir. Wait, and then the name is Sebar Pilen. <laughs> Sebar. So, anyway, guys, uh, you know what Smart Villain means, sir? Hmm. It means black arrow. Black wow, arrow. You do your research. Yeah, lah. I, I did. Cannot I smoke you. Uh. I did my reading lah before. But you must know, because uh, it's on your back, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ni, kalau, if you cannot pronounce Hasvana, you can just pronounce the rider, Hasrin. <laughs> idea, huh? idea, 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 idea. Okay, so before Hasri tell us the story about his Hasvana, we're gonna give a bit of background about it. Eh? The Hasvana Svart Villain 200 is a Neo Cafe Racer style of naked motorcycle from the Swedish brand. It shares the same platform and engine as the KTM 200 Duke. The Spart Villain 200 is marketed as an urban tourer with retro cues. Engine is a 199.5cc liquid cold single cylinder 4 stroke new HC with fuel injection and a 6 speed manual transmission. In Singapore, the Husky, as it is known, is an extremely rare sight on the streets. Alright, guys, so shout out to our sponsor, Lippy Moly. Do check out their online store for awesome motorbike care related products. Support us by clicking on the link below to view the range of products or use our promo code upon checking out. So, uh, Hasrin, mm. why the Hasvana Spark Villain 200? Previously, I came from a, from riding a KTM bike, a uh, KTM Duke 125. Mm. So, uh, honestly, when I sold that bike, sayang ah. I, I keep on telling people, yeah, this bike is just uh, any other bike. Ah. But I, I think until now, ah, I still feel the bit of pain ah, to, to sell it off. <laughs> so there's a bond between you and the bike. Lah. Is Definitely. it okay if I ask why you actually sold it? Okay, so uh, the bike actually, the series expires next year, February. Oh, okay. mm. So I see that if I were to hold on to it uh, until the series expires, then I mean the value confirm so will go down. Mm-hmm. So I, will, I want to catch it before it, the value uh, goes down. Lah. So I decided to sell it. I think around another 10 or 8 months left of the COE. So I managed to sell off the bike. Uh, then from there I start to hunt, uh, start to hunt for other bikes. So the options were the ADV 150, mm-hmm. the NMAX. I think at one point also I was thinking of the R1, R15, but I don't want that uh, because I takut kena kecam. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, it has a notorious reputation. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. and then, just stop there. <laughs> yeah, the, the next one is the Duke 200. With all this pool of bikes that I was considering, why I decided on the Svart Pillion was that at that time the COE was 8,700. So I surveyed the NMAX, I surveyed the ADV. Oh, I also surveyed the XSR. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And then the price more is around the same actually. The difference is about 2 3k. 2 3k. Yeah. Okay. So with that 2 3k difference, this Svart Pillion kind of like blurred the line between expensive and affordable. Lah. And when I bought it also, it was during a promotion, mm. the High Raya promo. So there was a if I'm not wrong, 2.98% interest there. So oh, it, it, wow. it actually really, low. yeah, it's, it's very low. The 2.98% compared to the ADV and Max with 4% and actually it's not actually very uh, oh. the affordable. Lah. I see, I see. Yeah, so and this is a brand new bike, is it? It's, it's a brand new bike. Yet, no, you yeah. bought this from straight from Dead Wheel? Or? Yes, correct. Straight from Dead Wheel, Kat Bukit Merah. So the, the experience there was very good. <laughs> <lah. laughs> it was very good, honestly, because um, the moment I entered the shop, they know that I, will, I wanted the Svart Pillen uh, because uh, I, I straight forward tell them I'm looking at this bike. There's a lot of things that from what I think I know about the bike versus what I actually do not know about it. Mm. So when I came to the showroom, they explained a lot of things. Uh. For one is the, the Svart Pillen 200 and comparing to the Duke 200, basically it's almost the same mm. with a few minor difference. So one is the front brake disc mm-hmm. for this bike. It is a 320mm. So if you think about it, 320mm on a 2B bike, that's overkill. Ah. But actually, it gives you the confidence in braking also. Mm-hmm. Paired with both ABS front and back. So I think for new riders, this is definitely... very. Com- you will be very confident in braking. Ah. 
this bike? Being a very, you know, exclusive bike. I wouldn't say rare. Mm. An exclusive bike. Mm. Uh, is there a concern about, you know, getting it repaired or mm. finding parts for you? From what I was told, mm. I'm not too worried. Lah. Because it's, technically it's just a dupe. Mm. A dupe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the dupe paling majulah you. with a different shade. Lah. Uh, so, okay. all the parts all is the same as dupe. Shares uh -huh. uh, almost everything with the dupe. Okay. And being a Duke one to five rider previously, mm -hmm. I could vouch that the repairs are pun not that expensive. Uh. Not that expensive as what people may think it is. To me, it's a it's a okay if ni motor ever nak jadi sakit lah. <laughs> so uh, you really must take care of it just like a regular KTM would lah. Yes, mm. yes, definitely. How would you, in your own words, describe mm. the performance of? Uh, this bike, uh, in terms of its uh, acceleration, uh, maneuverability, agility mm. in traffic, and uh, how would you compare this with the previous bike you have rode before? I think KTM is very notorious for having one of the best pickups. Uh. Mm. I think that is in my personal opinion. So even when I'm riding the Duke 125, this is a small CC bike, uh, but I think in kan on the stop line, kan, mm -hmm. right, ada, ada FZ la, as of other bike at the PN, it always seems like I'm the one yang pecut dulu. <laughs> <laughs> so the acceleration always seems to be on top of every other bike. Mm. Then it still holds true for this uh, Svart villain. So if you want to talk about acceleration because it's a bigger CC, mm -hmm. definitely the pickup is much more faster lah. So I've tried to max out the speed. The bike, there is at, at higher RPMs, higher speed kan, mm -hmm. there are the tendency to vibrate quite a lot lah. Ah, okay. But for me, it's nothing that I couldn't manage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the vibration, uh, I think would be a bit too violent for some, but for some also, I think they would deem it still okay. Being a naked bike, right? Mm. Uh, when you're riding at high speed, probably 90, yeah. Mm. Uh, would you? Does the wind get in your face? Mm -hmm. Since this is a naked bike, yeah. I think because I'm big, the wind also goes to my body. Yeah, the wind resistance. Like a parachute, it Yeah, definitely because it's a naked, mm. you you get to feel all the wind, lah. But again, because this is only a 200 cc. So it wouldn't get to any point that you would feel like it's too overpowering. Lah. Mm. How tall are you, brother? I am 1.83. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Does it <laughs> feel cramped for you? Mm. Yeah, look. Yeah. Does, does I mean, feel this cramped? feels as if it's more suitable for smaller uh. riders. Eh? Mm. Okay, actually, the seating position of the Husky mm -hmm. is actually taller than the Duke. Oh. For me personally, if I were to sit on a bike, my leg just nice flat foot on the ground. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, so if anyone that is shorter than me, I think they might have a bit of problem with mm. like flat footing on the ground. Lah. Mm -hmm. So maybe when they sit, they have to put one butt cheek away, you know, <laughs> put their leg on the ground. Or maybe you can just adjust the preload of the bike. Mm. But you think of uh, sizing wise, I think this bike is mainly suited for just me. Lah. If I want to pillion someone at the back, it will be a bit too cramped for them. Yeah, because you can see mm -hmm. at the seat. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Very oh. small. Yeah. You see, this is the rider's seat. I think I take until here. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I have to say, let's talk about the design. It's very unique. You never hmm. see this on any other bike hmm. on the road, especially. Yeah. True, true. Even though it has a new uh, cafe racer kind of uh, look outlook to it, uh, hmm. it's still unique. Mm -mm. Yeah, and Especially the mm. tank. Yeah, the tank. tank uh, uh, you love the tank, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> because, because it's like very broad and then it's flat mm. it's just unique lah by itself yeah. <laughs> speaking of tank right wow we finally see the accessory eh, in real life eh. this is the tank bag is it mm -hmm. yeah the magnetic tank bag lah ah. so it just unclips so the magnets are these two and this one at the bottom here lah ah. which this one also there's magnet so it's quite strong huh? Oh, it's very strong. <laughs> so you wouldn't have to worry about it actually flying off when you're riding. Mm. Oh, okay. When you bought the bike, it comes with the... Yes, the, the rack pre-installed. Oh, the rack is pre-installed, I see. But and mirrors? Stock? No, that one is after the... Aftermarket lah. Yeah, aftermarket. Because <laughs> the, the stock mirrors are... <laughs> Ugly, yeah? Very big. Uh, yeah. mm. Super very big. big. <laughs> <laughs> like, like ear coming out like that. Like, <laughs> like, coming out like that. <laughs> I see, I see. So that's actually the one of the first things that I changed to the bike is mm. the, the mirrors. Other than that, it's pretty much stock all around. Uh. So, would you want to like accessorize this? Oh. Hey, speaking of accessories, is mm. there a lot of it for the spark filter? Um, if you're talking about authorized parts, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think they call it power parts. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the things, uh, the lampu there, the lights, they have like the covers uh -huh. to make it more of like a urban, urban rugged look. Mm -hmm. There are the headlight covers, the saddlebag also. Because I think for this bike, I mean personally, I wouldn't put any box on it. Yeah. 
And I think if you put a box, also, it kind of destroys the aesthetic of the bike. Mm. Yeah, motor dah lawa. You put like one box there kat belakang, <laughs> is, I think it, it will affect the aesthetic a bit lah. Mm -mm. So in the way that they try to give you more storage is through saddlebags. So Maybe saddlebag will be really easy, the also power parts saddlebag or you can use an aftermarket to make it, you know, to complete the look? I think aftermarket, uh, it, it doesn't matter which one, mm -hmm. but the, the official one, they have saddlebags, but if you want for aftermarket saddlebags, um, you, I'm pretty sure you can fit it also on the bike. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that I want to do in the future with this bike. Yeah. How big is the fuel tank and how far can you go on a full tank? How's the consumption like? This bike, um, full tank is 9.5 litres. Mm -hmm. I've averaged it around 32, 33 kilometer per litre. Mm -hmm. So if you do max, I think around 300, around 300 there. Yeah, 300. Typical of a 2B bike. Yeah, typical. And for the power it has, I think you can't complain about the fuel consumption. La. Yeah, la, true, la, true. La. <laughs> this one is uh, city riding combined with highway traffic. La. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. So, Hasrin, I know that this is by heart actually at KTM Duk. Yes, <laughs> correct. <laughs> but would you reckon that the servicing and the maintenance is very similar to a Duke? I know that you've this for four months, so mm. I doubt that you have sent it for servicing yet. Uh, but do you think it's the same? Yeah, definitely. I think. Um, but um, it can wear whatever clothes it wants, uh. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's still a Duke. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, we have a Duke 125, his friend actually came. Uh. Uh, okay. So, he actually came, we can compare it side by side later on. Yeah. And it does look similar, uh, from the trellis frame, to the wheels, uh, to mm. the engine cover. Uh. It really is the same bike. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just that the engine cover from the KTM, they changed to Hus Husqvarna. <laughs> uh, yeah. I know four months so far no issue, uh, mm. but would you, do you hear any issues or problems from maybe other riders or the internet, you know, mm -hmm. about that is probably inherent to the Smart Villain 200? I think that is hard to say la, because I think in Singapore itself, the Husqvarna not much people heard of it. Mm. As in, not much people riding of it also. Yes, true. So if you were to see it on the road, so it's, I think you can count how many times if you see it on the road. Mm. Some people might not even have seen it on the yeah, road before. This is my second time seeing it. This <laughs> <laughs> is at the showroom. La. Oh. <laughs> I mean, most of the time, if you hear the name Hasvana, the first, the first bike will, that will come into my mind, your mind is what? Dead bike. Dead bike, yeah. Uh, and that one usually never really see. Uh. Mm. <laughs> most of the time, so not road legal. La, for mm. the oh, Hasvana. yes, you're right. Yeah. Mm, I think if you're going to talk about Servicing wise, I think it's just the usual KTM problems. I think KTM is notorious for having some of like the stator coil. Mm -hmm. For my personal experience, also owning a Duke previously, mm -hmm. mostly is the stator coil, most of the electronic parts. Lah. Uh, I so I think if that is the one that were to give issues, it must probably be around that the electrical kind of system in the bikes. Okay, so how much would you reckon that the, the, the repairs for that kind of uh uh, problems. I is think on the high side, you know, being a 2B bike. Mm -hmm. I think it might be a little bit of a stretch lah. Because mm. uh, comparing to the other commons like Yamaha or Honda, mm. I think they cost about hundreds, low hundreds or maybe 200, the most expensive one lah for 2B. But I think this one would cost slightly around 300 range. Mm. Yeah. So I would say that it's a bit of a stretch. But also it depends on how you ride. Because if ni moto buat kayu, most probably you would have to send it for more regular servicing, servicing, yeah, regular yeah. servicing. But for daily commute, it shouldn't give you any issues. It, it hasn't given me any issues as well. Mm -hmm. So just now you spoke about variety, yeah. This bike, like you can count. You know what I'm asking? Maybe is there like a, a Hasvana club or group that you are in or something? Currently no. <laughs> oh, wow, I see. Yeah, I, I'm not in. I'm not part of any group. I when I bought this bike. Yeah. It's just, just me and the bike. <laughs> I, Did the wheel tell you how many they have sold actually? I think uh, <laughs> they have named something in the numbers of 16. Oh. Yeah. yeah, directly from them if I'm not wrong. Oh my yeah. god. But with other um, other shops, they also have their own husband. But oh. they only account for... For their own. Yeah, for their own. So it's around 16. If, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> from that wheel itself. La. But you don't okay. know if other dealerships... Yeah, correct, correct. So, uh, Imagine eh, if you you want uh, you are looking on Facebook, Hasvana Smart Villain 200 group. Uh, you don't see, you don't have. But you type KTM Duke 200. Oh, <laughs> <lombak, laughs> <so laughs> then he just uh, come in. 
Hi guys. <laughs> hey, hi guys. Welcome. Actually, uh, why are you riding? Actually, uh. at the showroom tour, I noticed his bike is like all alone in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, I'm riding a husband. Uh. What? <laughs> that is like, if I want to find a Facebook group, uh-huh. I see husband only got 16 people. <laughs> <laughs> I think, hey, yo, it's not spam or what? Uh, <laughs> Being a rare bike, right? Uh, mm. You get a lot of looks, you know, when you're on the road. Mm. People was like, do people ask you, what the hell is this? Oh, uh. <laughs> so there was one instance. Uh, I, I parked it at my house near parking lot. Mm-hmm. So it's just got, uh, it's just underneath my block, the, the parking lot for motorbike. Masuk Unchi, the start, about to move off. I see this one kakak. Then coming datang. Then I thought she was looking for something or like I dropped something. Because the way she approached me, like, I'm so like, what to stop you, lah? Yeah, I thought like, what's happening? <laughs> so the datang like, what bike is this, ah? I never seen this bike before. So that was the first time that someone actually say like, bangga, ah, you know? Yeah, proud. Yeah, yeah, be proud. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing, lah. Like, I think people are having trouble because I say, oh, ni Hasvana. Then like, what the hell? <laughs> you know? Especially for for our class to be riders, ah, no snoop about bikes, ah. Hmm. They often never hear about this before. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I wouldn't have known it also if I didn't go to the showroom. I mean, for me, I've heard about Hasbana before. They are really well known for dirt bikes. Mm. But I really don't know that they do they do produce uh, street bikes as well. Uh, I think it's also partly because Hasbana is owned by KTM now. Mm. So yeah. uh, they maybe they want to tap in the the fan base of Hasbana lah. So mm. maybe they come out with this yeah. street bike. Maybe maybe it's time it's time to diverse. Mm. Diversify the the offering of Hasvana into the road bikes mm. because the, I think that's where most of the riders come in, right? Because not everybody goes to the to the dirt track. But you have to remember <laughs> overseas market. Oh yeah, I different think than Singapore. Bike, Singapore different. <laughs> that's why I always. Singapore. Uh, that's why I find it weird doing my research about KTM mm. and Hasvana. They're really well known for dirt bikes. Mm. Yes, uh, correct. In Singapore mm. is. Uh, very weird because we got no dirt to play, man. Yeah <laughs> Even the the dirt track that they they used to have in Changi uh. and in Loyang now become factory already. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the only dirt track riding you can if you ride behind lori tanah. <laughs> <laughs> tanah ada jatuh kan? And then you ride on. Wee <laughs> <laughs> Maybe maybe you know uh, dirt dirt bike riders out there if you know where. To go dirt, dirt bike riding, eh? dirt riding. Uh, <laughs> dirt bike riding. <laughs> to go. <laughs> Apa? Let us know lah. Maybe <laughs> you can. You can recommend. Uh, uh. Recommend a place, or is there any legal requirement that mm, allows mm. bikes to go off road? Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which feature of this bike that you fall in love with? Which feature? Uh. Right, I can only pick one. Eh? Anything ah? Anything ah? I think uh, okay. The first one I think would be the tail light. Oh, oh my wow. god, I yeah, tell you, yeah, the yeah. light. It's really unique. Huh? It's really unique. Oh. It is really unique. Basically, I think the lights in general. Lah, mm. Because they are full LEDs. Mm-hmm. And the punya terang is like mm. Knowing that it is a stock bike, so it's legal. Ah, Especially okay. the headlight. <laughs> the headlight, you can uh, low beam, normal. Really like high beam for most bikes. Mm. But the high beam, this one is... It's just, uh, it's just on the next level. It's running light, like cool, mm. right? You know, it's <laughs> like one piece. Yeah, it's like one, one piece. Uh, like yeah, for me, I think I like the body because uh, it's like one piece of mm. uh, body here, you know. On the, yeah. It's like the tank just flows down like this. Yep, yep. And it they, curves yeah. they managed uh, to make the tank a feature, uh, an aesthetic of the bike also. Mm. Yeah. yeah, wow. Then I think the second thing would be the size. Because mm-hmm. um, the size is very compact, very nimble. Uh. So um, you wouldn't really, you feel like you have complete control of the bike. Mm. The seating posture is a little bit on the racy side uh, because when you sit on the bike, your kaki is a bit towards the back. Mm. So you really have a full grip on the bike. So when you are cornering, when you like tengah nak selit kan, you really have like you feel like you really have a lot of control over the bike. Mm. So I think that's another thing that is achievable because of like the shape mm-hmm. and how the bike is um, produced lah. Performance of using this. The Smart Villain 200 is really a mouthful la. <laughs> <laughs> I have a name uh, for it lah. Uh, oh, what is it? Uh, Savannah. 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 Oh, nama sexy sih. So. <laughs> nama, nama macam... Is she Swedish? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is a Swedish bike. Yeah, it is a Swedish bike. <laughs> I don't, I cannot say later my girlfriend Mara. <laughs> yeah, but Emelina is Malay, so yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what's the best memory in your four months of Owning uh, Savannah here. Oof, best memory. 
Okay, I, 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 I know. This one, uh, you just reminded me of it lah. Mm. So, we was at the traffic light. So, I think it was kind of in the peak hours. Just lah, kalau traffic light, all the motors would slit, 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 and then go to the front. All one row, right? Uh, all one row. <laughs> Stand by lah, green again. <laughs> <laughs> So just nice, I was in the middle. Uh -huh. There was a few bikes on the right, a few bikes on the left. Mm -hmm. So I was just sitting, looking straight. Mm -hmm. And I noticed back then people looking at me. So like kidding, people looking at me. <laughs> so like all looking at me, I just look straight, look at the traffic light. Once green, then I just go. That I, I look at my mirror like smooch up tengah soli catching. So <laughs> I think that is just the best memory lah. Like everyone really appreciates this bike. Mm -hmm. yeah, so macam it feels good lah that when you. You pay a certain amount of money for the bike, then you get not only you appreciating it, but everyone else is appreciating it also. Ah, recommendation. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so who would you recommend uh, this bike for? Honestly, I think anyone who just passed their license, mm -hmm. just, just get their license, mm -hmm. they should really consider a KTM or consider this bike. Lah. Mm, okay. Because, like I say, lah, one of the things that if I were a new rider, kan, I definitely want to know like the brakes. I want to have full confidence with the brakes mm -hmm. of a motorbike. Knowing that this bike, um, I think, I think lah, I'm not too sure, but the front disc of this bike is the biggest in any 2B mm -hmm. with 320 mm. So with combined with ABS, I'm pretty sure it will give you a lot of stopping power, especially for uh, a motorbike with this small CC. So you don't you don't have to be macam takut lah because I know some. People who baru pass inexperienced riders on the road kan Lagi kalau dah nampak motor baik They always want to pra And then sometimes they oversee the fact that they have to brake mm -hmm. So when they want to brake early, uh, brake late I think this bike is Like it has the, the power and it has the features everything to make you brake on time and mm -hmm. brake safely lah Hasrin, thank you so much for sharing your ride with us right. Thank you, the thank you Hasvana Sakvidan 200 I mean it's very refreshing to see uh, Asvana in the show. This is probably our first, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, our first Asvana. As aside from the one that we featured in the show. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very refreshing, you know, to see the Asvana as opposed to the Yamahas and Hondas out mm -hmm. there. Yeah, mm. it's That's true. And it's nice that we have riders like Hasrin who is really into this brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and hopefully more riders mm -hmm. will, you know, ride more unique bikes. On oh, Singapore rules, uh, very boring lah. Honda, <laughs> Honda Yamaha. Honda I think Yamaha. maybe the next one, if looking for Hasvana, mm. the next eye-catching one I think would be the 401 Vip Pilen. Ah, uh, oh, the bigger brother lah. Yeah. The bigger brother. So what, what, uh, do you intend to keep this bike in the in the long term or? I do, I do actually. It's a statement piece lah, I would say. Mm -hmm. So and I'm honestly very proud to own this this bike. Mm -hmm. So I. In the foreseeable future, I believe I will still want to own this bike. Lah. That's it for the vlog. Uh, any riders want to review the bike us, you can touch us on our social media pages below. Uh, like and share this video with Rad. Okay. Husband <laughs> <laughs> uh, riders out there, or uh, you know, if you have any comments or suggestion or experience about this bike, do put it in the comment section below. Like and share this video with your riding khakis and don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to support us as well as our sponsor Liquid Moly uh, do check out their online store click on the link below and use our promo code upon checking out and also don't forget to check out our Shopee store uh, for uh, decals and in a way you're also supporting us lah. Uh, and yeah that's it for the vlog we will see you in the next one